Hello everyone. Good day wherever you are. Today I'm going to be making this uh, presentation. Um, there was this is a scheduled presentation. However, the scheduling is not being picked up. So, if you appear at the scheduled site, please join us on this uh, stream. So I know that in about a minute. People will be getting uh, messages for them to appear on the, um, you know, scheduled uh, program. But unfortunately, the scheduled program doesn't work, so I start a new program. Because sometimes when I use the scheduled program, you know, Facebook uh, mess up with it and thing goes wrong. So that's why we're doing this live with our scheduling. So I just want people to um, join. Uh, this video is going to be, um, as you say, it's uh, refreshing. It's going to be shining the lights on some of the issues, especially that has to do with the human trafficking from Edo State. And we're going to be coming up with a solution. We're going to be coming up with a solution. This video, I want to make it, and it is a special video, so I'm dressed up for it. And the reason why it's a special video is that I want this video to, I'm going to send it to the European um, Commission, I'm going to send it to the Italian government, and you know, so it has to be special, because this is a video that I'm making in response to the state govern, governor, of, uh, the governor of those states, Governor uh, Basaki, and the um, Speaker of the House of Assembly of those states. And also the uh, Speaker of the National Assembly uh, trip to the to Italy a few days ago, and regarding the the barrier of 26 Nigerian girls in Italy. As you all may have known, when these girls were, um, you know, they died on the sea, the Nigerian government didn't do anything. The Edo state government did not do anything as well. So the day they were buried, I got some pictures from the from a journalist in Italy uh, from her Twitter account. So those pictures I published, um, you know, an article about it on my Facebook page, and that article was read by two three hundred and sixty thousand people. You heard me right. That article reached over 360,000 people all over the world. From there, the pictures and everything went viral in Nigeria. It is when the government saw that, then they then sent somebody to go and make an announcement to ask the Italian government why did they bury 16, 26 Nigerian girls uh, like that. That was the best response they could give. Then, a few days later, the governor of Edo State decided to rush down to Italy and with the Speaker of the House of Assembly. So, that's what this story is all about today. First of all, it, it, sound, it's, it looks interesting that he went to the United uh, to, to, to Italy to talk with the Italian government. However, however, I don't know who handles these people. When you are a governor, you have handlers. You have people who are supposed to be responsible, who handle you. If you are going to, in Europe and in America, what people normally do is that if you want to show you, you that you care, whether you're a politician or not, or you want to show that you care to the people, when you go to their country, to, you have to show condolence. You have to show condolence for what has happened, which means that you need to go and visit the gravesite where those girls are buried. You need to go there and you need to uh, have a moment of silence and you need to gather Nigerians together. Those poor Nigerian youths who struggled to get to, the, to Italy, you have to pull them, bring them together, give them a fatherly advice, give them hope, talk with them, and all this 
has to be you know documented we have to see you going there to lay flowers on the graveside we have to see you going there to light a candle we have to have a vigil for the those who love their souls not only those 26 girls who love their souls but all other nigerians there are there are thousands of nigerians and african children who have lost their soul on the shore of italy who have been washed down to the shore of italy that is how responsible people people with emotion people with feelings people who are normal leaders that's how they behave so now i don't know who was the handler of the governor of Edo state and the, the speaker and also the speaker of the national assembly why they would go to italy and not able to show emotion based on the fact that it's their children that are buried there and it's their children that are washed down to italy's shore all the time so they go there they talk with some high level people they talk and make blah 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 stories and they take some pictures with those people and they left so but what they don't realize is that you know a european doesn't take you serious and i repeat a european doesn't take you serious when you when because they can when you behave like that because they can see that there is no emotion involved in this transaction and we are talking about the human life here we are talking about human lives they can see that these people who came to visit them in italy do not show any uh, you know human feelings for their own country people because if they did they would behave different and that difference is what they don't see so they will be polite to you and tolerate you and listen to all the blah 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 and then they will move on because they don't see you as a partner to any solutions so that's about that now before i go on um i like to advise all the young people in italy all the people that managed to make it there please don't go back home don't go back to nigeria forget about what the governor is telling you there is no work in a state honestly what pains me the most is that the speaker of the house of assembly goes back to nigeria and start telling them that look uh, with that there is they told the youth to come back home that there is job for them that the governor is building factories is building uh, you know developing the state and that they can come and get job and things will be fine well it is one thing to lie to these children when they were back in nigeria it's one thing to destroy their lives when they were back in nigeria now they fought through you know terrible journey it is an epic journey it is it is it is degrading it is terrible how these young people made it to italy it beats my knowledge so when they finally come there now now these people go there and start lying to them again destroying their life even further lying to them that things are good back home so if you are in Italy, please share this video, share, 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 so that all the young people in Italy can get it, they can, they can see it. If you move, if you manage to step your foot into Italian shore, if you step a foot into Italian shore, please don't go back to Nigeria. Europe is big, okay? Europe is big. Once you are in Italy, you can move from Italy all the way to Poland if you like. You know, you can take a boat, a, a, a bicycle. You can take a, a, a what do you call it, a, a, a car. You can take a train. You can take a bus. You can travel to anywhere you like in Europe. The border is open. Don't go back to Nigeria because today. Nigeria is a, a sinkhole. People who are adjusted 
is the worst state in Nigeria right now. Your life is not safe in those states. There are cottages everywhere. If you, they don't kill you to make money, they will kill you for fun. They will bury you alive and nothing will be done about it. People like me are afraid to go back to a dose state. Nothing good comes out from a dose state. It has, it has never and it is not and it may never be because there is too much wickedness in that state. There is too much wickedness in that state. And anybody that comes to power in a dose state for the past 16 years, maybe 20 years now, have not done anything to bring trust to that state, to bring peace to that state, to bring security to that state. So therefore, this is not this is not a makeup story. Most people, most of you have known me by now. I don't I don't talk crap. Your life is not safe in a dose state. If you have a small amount of money, chances are you will be kidnapped and they will ask you to go and bring 30 million to get you out. Just small money. If you are not a citizen, you have absolutely no right. The police block majority of the main roads and everybody that comes by must pay money before you can travel through that road every day so if you are used to traveling a certain road every day you're going to be paying every day to travel through that road that is a do state so if you know you are crazy absolutely crazy and you step your foot into Italy after taking that journey that perilous journey after being beaten, being almost killed, some of your friends died in the water. All that had happened, and then you get your foot into Italy, and then you let somebody tell you bullshit story that life is done good back home, that you should come back. Then you must be one of the most stupid person that have ever lived. Sorry for my French. So therefore, spread this video. I, I love young people. The life of young people that have been destroyed already in Nigeria is just too much. The life of young people that have been destroyed in Libya, in the, on the desert, on sea, is just too much. For the few who found their way into European shore, please, eh? in Igbo land they say, Biko, Biko, in Dutch they said, Ash to bleed. Don't go back to Nigeria. Please, do yourself a favor. Don't go back to Nigeria. If you go back to Nigeria, I find you there. Eh? Nakoboko. Nakoboko. Don't go back to Nigeria. Nigeria today is a sinkhole. That is spiraling into self-destruction very fast. So those of you who have been able to find your way to Europe, under no circumstances should you deliberately enter a plane, say you are going back to Benin City. There is no industry. One in no day. There is no work. One. In no day. There is no food. Food, common food where man would chop, as fella used to say, in no day. So ooh, you can better die in Italy. True story, you can better die in Italy. They will give you a befitting barrier. So if the other thing is this, so since we have settled that one now, so if you know any young man when he won't go back home, send me an, a, a message so that I can give him a bit whooping. Now, since we have settled that, if it was if it were Americans that were buried there, 
26 Americans buried in Italy. The Americans will come with their C C C C uh, C uh, twenty plane or C hundred plane, what they call that big plane, military aircraft. We we'll come and carry out dead body back. If it were Germans that were buried there, they would come with their you know German planes and carry out the dead body back. When it was Indians, even Indian, Krokoro, Malaysians, Chinese, they would come and carry their dead body back. So. Our governor and our speaker went to Italy. There was no one dead body that followed him back. No one dead body that followed him back. So what does that say to the Italians? Number one, your people are not important to you. Otherwise, you go and bury them back home. Number two, even in debt, even in debt, they are still better off in a foreign land than your country. That's what it means. Uh, let me repeat that. The Italians look at you and they think, even in debt, these children are still better off in Italy than in their fatherland. Otherwise, these people that came here, they would have done something to repatriate the dead body back home and have a state barrier for them. Have a moment of silence. A moment of reflection, a moment of, you know, sadness to bury them. No, not these people, not these people. So they fly back home and then we have this speaker, this same speaker who was fighting, fighting in the, speak, in the state house, in the house of assembly. So you have this guy now coming and say, eh, we went there, we got there, the wedding happened. And I saw the come to one. So, I wrote it down here what he said. It's because of him I'm making this video. I got pissed up. Now, but one thing he said is that the problem of why there is uh, tra trafficking is because of demand and supply. And because these uh, evil people, that they, they, that they, they pay for these girls now, like if they didn't pay for these girls, these girls wouldn't be coming there. That's number one, he said. And then he said, and number two, these are Igbo people, they legalize prostitution. So we tell them, say, uh, as an legalized prostitution, so that is what is creating demand for this type of business. So they need to re re look into that and they need to stop uh, legalization of prostitution. Then they said, uh, another one is saying, some of these boys, when they go there, I'm telling you the way you say it, though. Because uh, you know he was speaking pidgin English for the for the low level people to understand him. So these people who are coming to Italy, they are doing that because there is a labor work there. They want to use them for the farm, so they are using them for the farm to go and do farm work. That's another one he said. So and then he said hey, they are some of these boys. They are using them. They are harvesting their body parts. They are using body parts, and these people who are harvesting their body parts. They are not uh, Nigerian doctors, so they are Yoruba doctors. So, uh, so at the end, it is the white man that is to blame. So it is the white man that is to blame why Bini girls are prostitutes. Ninety-nine percent of the prostitutes in Italy are Bini girls, but it is not the fault of anybody in Nigeria. It is the Italian people that is their fault. You see, that's when I got pissed off. Let me tell you where I got pissed off, and I say, look. Let's take the issue of demand and supply, okay? So because the Italians demand, men demand sex, they, there is a demand for sex there, then that, does that mean you have to supply? Does that mean you have to supply? Why can't the Germans supply? Why can't the, you know, uh, you know, Ethiopia supply? For God's sake, why can't the Hausa people in the north supply? How many Hausa children do you see a prostitute in Italy? I've never seen one. Why? How many? So why don't you have the uh, uh, people from uh, what they call them uh, Benway to supply? So if houses are not supplying because they demand and supply in, in Italy, the people from Benway State are not supplying. People from Maduguri are not supplying. Why is it that they do, those states have to supply? Eh? 
The lion in the den is hungry. If you go to the zoo, lions are hungry. Then there is a demand for food. Does that mean you have to jump inside? Because it, there is a demand for food in the lion's den. So now you go and jump inside. So, honestly, I, I thought that was an irresponsible speech. Then, he is now saying that the Italian government should legalize, should, 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 should think about uh, the legalization of prostitution. Let me tell you this. Most European countries legalize prostitution. Why? Because they, when prostitution was not legalized, then they do it, people do it in the corners. In the corner. So disease spread a lot. Because there was no control on these girls. There was no medical treatment. There was nothing. There was uh, no, no, no system to checkmate them. So the government realized that, okay, we, cannot, we, we need to have a structure in place because Europeans are thinking structures. So the structure that is in place in Europe now is this. If you are a prostitute, you register. Say, okay, look, I did do this work. Then, the, you, you know, one of the things that happen is that they, they make sure that you are not on that one big madame that is, you know, is trafficking you. That is one of the reasons why they have to register. Because if you are registering to do it, it's a job and you like to do that job. Why must you pay a lot of money to a madam and you are not getting anything? That is slavery. And to avoid slavery, that's why they institute those laws. And another reason for those laws is that they are checked every week by doctors. Doctors actually go to them, look at all the registered women and give them a blood test, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, checking for HIV, hepatitis, and some of these diseases. And once it, one of them is, uh, uh, you know, is discovered to be sick, having sick sickness that can be transmitted sexually, then they are taken off the street. Those are the reasons. It's a, it's a society that thinks properly. So you have all these guys that come from Nigeria, they didn't, do, they didn't do their research. So they just go there and start talking. Okay? So that pissed me off because it looks to those people like we are all idiots back home. Now, and then he talks about the um, working in farms. See, because there is work in the farm, these people go to the farm to work. Hey, people in Nigeria know me. My name is Aram's. I am the owner of Aram's Farms. Guess where Aaron's Farms is? At those state. In Benin City. When I have been having the palm projects in Benin City now for some time, when the cattle came, the Fulani cattle came, and they destroyed my entire farm, the research facility, everything was completely destroyed. When my farm was employing more than 50 youths, more than 50 years, that's how we started. By today, we were expecting to expand to 500 youths in a do state. Because when I came to Nigeria to farm, I didn't come to make money. I just saw the appalling situation and lack of job in Nigeria. I said, okay, I think I'm retired, so I think I can add value to Nigeria and create jobs. That was why I went to Nigeria. You know, I didn't know that the situation there was that bad. So when I when I when we had the farm and then the, after we have set it up, everything's working very well, then the Hufulani Hesmen came and destroyed the whole thing. So I made a small video and I was asking the governor, please help us. This uh, farm we just started here, they have destroyed everything. Please help us secure it. Please ah merely I said that the whole town went loose on me. All the lions came out, all the Obasaki people came out. All the APC people came out and they were attacking me, attacking me, attacking me. And they would say they want to kill me. Now, how do I dare talk to the governor like that? I said, ah, this, I was not expecting this type of backslash because for me, I thought that the governor was not aware of this problem. That if, so I have to make him aware that, look, oh, is this problem going on here? And is, it can derail your your agricultural program because you came into power saying you were going to you know create uh, use agriculture to develop the state and me I came to help you true story me I came to help you so now this is what I have done with my own money with my own time and everything and has may have destroyed ah please look at it all because if they continue like this they, you know the state will not move forward
And then you had all these bunch of idiots who could not understand that simple reasoning and they're attacking me, attacking me, attacking me. At the end, at the end, I had to run away from a do state. At the end, I have to run away from a do state. Today, I have not gone back to a do state since I ran away from a do state. They wanted to kill me. Okay. Was it not a farm that I was doing there? I was doing the farm with my money. I did not get the money from the state government. The state government did not assist me one day. State government, even fertilizer to farm, to, to take care of the farm, we cannot get from the state government. It's not for free. We want to buy the fertilizer and the state government cannot even arrange to get us fertilizer. The federal government will say, yeah, they have this uh, presidential initiative for fertilizer, blah, blah, blah. Where is our own in a dose state? And I've made a video about this where I asked the governor of a dose state, where is our fertilizer? We have now hectares of uh, 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 the cassava. So there's no, there no fertil good fertilizer. They are fertilizer in the market, but they are fake. We don't have good fertilizer. Will it not be? So now, the same governor and his speaker are now going to tell people that they should come back to a do state, that the farm they are doing, working there, that we have farms in a do state. Where are the farms? Where are the farms in a do state where they are going to work? There are no farms in a do state where they are going to work because the farms that are there, like the farms like I have, the government has refused to support us in any way. In any way. No loans. There are loans. Oh, the federal government have, say, they say they have a Greek loan. Our governor has not been able to help any farmer to access this a Greek loan. We, the governor has not, if you go to the Ministry of Agriculture today in Edo State, they don't have one single tractor. They don't want one single bag of fertilizer. They cannot give you one single cassava stick to go and plant in your farm. This is the chaos in a dose state. And believe me, I've spent over half a million dollars of my own money. I don't have billions of like those people donating money to Pastor Adeboye. I don't have billions of dollars. But for me, what I have, I've invested over half a million dollars. And the, in a normal society, if I was using that money to have a farm in Italy, or have a farm in Spain, or we have a farm in Colorado, or you know, uh, I, I would have been, I, it, that money would be now up to three, three million dollars. But in Nigeria, you don't come to, you, you know, the government just refused to help you, give you an assistance, give you, you know, we're not saying to look, come and give us money for free. That's not, nobody's asking that. But for one thing, make the place safe for us to work. Okay? Number two, uh, you know, let us be able to train students. Okay, so that story don't go. I made a proposal, I told the state, Edo state government, I said, look, I will be able to train Edo student children for free. I will be able to train Edo children for free. At least 1,000 children, 1,000 youths, just hand over them to me. I will train them in agriculture and it won't cost you one naira. However, there's one small thing I want you to do. I beg, announce them for radio. Since you are the governor, since you are you are you own the radio station, since you own the TV station, come out, you know, announce announce it so that people can come, the youth can know that you are backing this operation. And then we can get to work. I'm not even saying to the state government, give us land. Because me, I have a land that I'm working on. The governor and the state, they refuse to do that simple gesture. So, if you don't do simple things like that, how is work going to be created, for God's sake? How is job going to be created? Was it not the same youth that are frustrated and took a road trip to Libya? These are the same youth I've been saying to you. Let's organize them so that I can train them. These same youth. 
And that you don't ask for one naira from the state. Go to go and ask any state any state representative if Mr. Aarons ever asked one naira from the state government. I never did. My, my, my ambition, what I only want to do is to create wealth for our people. Create wealth, create make sure that our youth have jobs. Because if they have jobs, the city will be more nicer place to sit. You can go and sit in a beer parlor and drink beer and nobody will be putting gun on your head. That is, and I want to provide a future for these young people. I don't have children in Nigeria. I am not married to a Nigeria. I don't have a house in Nigeria. I am very comfortable where I live. So when I break out of that comfort zone, I come to the, 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 most, the worst place in Nigeria, apart from like my Duguri, Edo State, then you should know that somebody like me may business. The least a state can do is to ask such a person, look, how can we assist you to create this job? How can we assist you to help our young people? The reason our young people are living in Edo State this is, this is, I want to shift the gear. You know, people talk about human trafficking, human trafficking, human trafficking. We have two types of journey people are taking. Number one, people are living in those states because they are fed up. They rather die than to stay in those states. Young people look at those states and there is no hope. It's a dead end. It's an abyss. It is a sinkhole. They have to get out of it. Okay? That's the problem. They have to get out of it. If you, if you, no matter what you do, they have to get out of it. They must find a way to get out of that city. Because young people have life. They have aspirations in life. They have there's dreams that they want to achieve. Everybody has a dream. This Nigeria today is not what 99% dream of. Maybe 1% dream of this chaos. They love this chaos because they make a lot of money from this chaos. The rest 99%, this was not their dream. So, you have a young person who is in his 20s. He looks at the future and he said, what is my future in this sinkhole? No future. So, you know what? I'm going to go to the desert. For me, that is not a human trafficking hole. If you want to call it human trafficking, then you should call it a self-human trafficking. The person is trafficking himself or nobody is trafficking him. So, we need to, we need to really start telling each other the truth. Young people are living at those state in, in droves because they are fed up. And those state is a dead end. Nothing happens in a those state that is good. That's why these young people are living. That's number one. So now I'm switching into gear. Why the situation is like this in a those state. The European Union, I have my tablet here. The European Union um, have written over 10 reports about the um, the situation of the um, uh, you know the, the, the what they call the migration from a do state <laughs> i'll put it on my side you'll see it the first report here is called uh, is written by the european asylum support office the european asylum support office and they call it the country of origin information report and the, for the country is nigeria sex trafficking of women that's the first uh, document. The EU wrote it. So all these politicians that are pretending that they don't know anything, eh? this thing, the EU wrote it 2014 already. It's a special report. None of them ever bothered to read it. And the second one is the trafficking of Nigerian girls in Italy. The data, the story, and the social services. That's, that's the other document, okay? Don't worry, it will be on my chat. You can go and copy it. Go and show the governor. The next one is... Um, this one is a little bit more lengthy document. It's called, it's from a Europol. It's called a uh, situation report, trafficking human beings in the EU. This is already about Nigerians so These are detailed documents and explanation of why this problem is going on. 
Okay, so these people, you know, they are very smart. I used to work with them as well. So this is what they put together. They put on this beautiful, um, you know, I don't know if you can see it. This is a, this is a beautiful slide they put together. So I'll, I'll put it on, on, the, on, the, on the website. So they said there are two, there are two major reasons why there is, uh, you know, as, uh, what they call this as human trees trafficking. Whether you, somebody traffic you or you traffic yourself. One is the push factor, the push factor, what push children or people out of their country or Nigeria, those states. And the other one is the pull factor, what pull them into uh, Europe. So now when you take a look at the push factors, the first one is gender or other discrimination. So I'm telling you what the Europeans think in their very intensive report. You will see Nigerians, they interview those girls, they went to Libya to interview girls and boys and everybody. They even went to Benin City. They will tell you which village in uh, those states have the most prostitutes in Italy. It is there for this document. You would, you know, so you go and show your governor. So gender or other discrimination. If why is my farm not why has the government been discriminating me since I came to those states? Because they thought I am a PDP. Because I said something that they don't like, they think, oh, if, if somebody says something we don't like, he must be a PDP. I don't know PDP. You know, I'm not a PC, I'm not PDP, I'm just a, you know, a free thinker. But they think because I'm a PDP, then um, you, we, should not, we should kill him. We should destroy his farm. We should not help him at all. We should not do anything that is humanly possible to see that his farm succeed, even when he's employing our own children. That is, that, is the, that is the thinking of the black man, eh? So that is discrimination. And this discrimination in a dose state right now, as small as a dose state, even there are this discrimination in employment. First of all, they will discriminate you because you are not from, uh, you are not from Benin, you are not a Benin man. Because the governor is a Benin man, or you're not from Esako, because the former governor was from Esako, so everybody from Esako and Benin, they are not ruling at those states. If you come from Uromi, then God has punished you. If you come from Ubiaja, then God has punished you. So you have all this discrimination going on, but our people don't understand these things. Eh? Then, but the Europeans do. Then the second one is lack of education. Lack of education. All these girls going to Italy, they can just you know, read 1, 2, 3 to 10 and maybe spell their name in capital letters. That's basically what they can do. These children are not educated. If you go to Italy now, some of the, 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 the black people there, 99% of the black people there are the worst type of black people you can think of. Because the illiterate comes there. The idiots come there. The people without manners, they go there. They fight in the street with their breasts fight flapping up and down. Those are the type of black people that are in Italy. That's why people like me are ashamed to go to that area of Italy. But we'll go, I'll go next month. So, lack of education this is a serious problem. That's what is driving people out from a those state. The, 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 the educational system in those state have collapsed. Ambrosia Lee was the last person that invested in a those state education. We're talking about 30 years ago. After Abrus Ali was gone, everything Abrus Ali created has been destroyed. Then, inequality in the labor market. If you are a woman in a those days, try to look for work. That is why women, the only thing they can do in a those state, and in most places in Nigeria, is go to the market for women. They go to the market to sell. When you come to my farm, See women uprooting cassava from the ground. Seriously, women uprooting cassava from the ground. Because the those boys don't work, they don't go to work. They don't want to work, they are, you know, they are 419, scam artists, that's what they do. The women do, do, you know, do the work. They will go to the market, harvest the cassava, go and clean it up, go and fry it, bring it to the market, sell it, get the money out and give to their boyfriend. Okay, that's what it's called, it's a social problem. Then, no, the next one is human rights violation. The human rights violation. In a dope state, there is no human rights. 
<laughs> this is talking about rights. This is talking about rights in the Dutch state. Today, the young people, they are they are target to the police. If you're a young man in the Dutch state, ah, the police is after you. People, young people that come to my farm, sometimes they are afraid to come to work because if the the police catch them on the road, they are going to work. Oh, the police is going to detain them. They are going to pay one thousand naira each. Otherwise, the police is going to charge them from being a member of cops. These boys have ID signed by me with them. They can call me on the phone, say, "Are you their boss?" They know Aram's fans. Even then, these boys will be arrested. And you know how many times I have to go and bail my workers out from the police? From you know, just send them money. Say, give them money to bail them out. Because what did they do wrong? They were going to work. That is the fate of a young man in a do state. We're not even talking about the girls, though, because if you are a girl in a do state, sorry, your life is screwed. You have no life. Okay? That's what we call human rights violations. We are not even talking about the fact that you, your life is not secure in that state. We are not talking about the fact that you have no right at all because uh, there are talks. Every rich person in a do state has talks. So if they feel that if you do something wrong, somebody will come out of the car and beat you up and nothing will happen. Beat you up is, is, is nice. When they beat you up, then it is that is even nice. When they want to be when they want to be serious, they will carry you put inside the boot of the vehicle and drive you away. And what they're going to do with you then is only God that knows. And nobody will ask. I've seen it myself and nobody will ask. People will just stand and watch because if they ask, say, hey, why are you bundling that boy away? They will say, they will bundle him or her along as well. So, you are living in a state where, you see, in the Western world, that is kidnapping. If you carry, some, if you carry somebody against his or her will, put it, the person inside the boot of your vehicle and drive away, you have kidnapped that person. You go to jail. It's a federal offense in the U.S. 30 years will be waiting for you. In Nigeria, that's just normal. In a those state, that's just normal. You just beat them. Beat them where we are. Put them inside a boot. Carry and go. And nobody will ever find, will ask, what happened to that boy they beat where we are that day? They carry and go. Nobody will ask. If after some time you hear, you won't see the boy again. Where is this boy? And we don't see him anymore. You just go like that. The boy is dead. They have thrown him inside the moat. They have this moat that goes around the those They throw him inside that one. Persecution of violent abuse. How many people have been persecuted in a do state, or in, a, in Nigeria for that matter, because they abuse a woman? People just feel if you a woman is a target, it's a punching bag. Beat and where where, beat and where where. People have no respect for women. People have no regard for women. It's when in Nigeria I see that a man will beat up a married woman in the street. True story. A man you don't know before, he will beat up a married woman in the street because that married woman said something that he didn't like. Ah, go and try that in America or try that in Europe. You will be locked up for a very long time. So, these are the reasons the EU gave in this document why Nigerians leave their country, especially from Endo State. I didn't make it up, it's in this book. Okay? So then I said, what is the pull factor? What is pulling these people out of Nigeria? The pull factor is, one, false promises. False promises of a better life. Huh? High salary. Uh, good working environment. So, these false pro uh, promises, what, what does it go? You have Nigerians who are living in the diaspora. They will come here. They don't have a job. But they will go and stay in front of an expensive car. Uh, Mercedes or BMW. They will take picture. Go in, in front of uh, uh, another one. They will take picture. They will send it to Nigeria. They will say, ah, you see, we are living a good life here. Life is good. Life is good. You come. 
come, you come and live the same life. So, the, the, the rest people will come, there is no life home. Everybody is in the street. They don't go to school, even when there's possibility to go to school, they don't go. They don't learn the language. The, the, the hope of ever moving forward in the society is zero. So this is what the EU calls the false promises. Now, when we want to talk about that false promises, the document went forward in describing all this. You know, they describe the push condition and they describe the pull condition, how it happened. So let's think about in the push condition, you know, I don't know, maybe this is a part of pull and push. In Nigeria today, if you go to a dose state, every young, every family in a dose state, every family in a dose state has somebody in the diaspora. True story. So every family in a dose state wants to go, they are, they are at least, um, you know, uh, if you have a hundred youths in a dose state, 90% want to go to the diaspora. So, uh, because they believe that when you go to the diaspora, you don't have to walk. You know, most of them don't want to come because they want to walk. They believe that when you go to the uh, diaspora, you don't have to walk. There is money there all the time. The parents of Adolites, these are some of the worst parents on earth. The parents from a dust state, these are some of the worst parents on earth. Honestly, some of the worst parents on earth. 30 years ago already, this thing started. I will come back from overseas, like they always call it. Parents will be lining up in my house to have their children with visa. They have their you know, the children to go to Italy, to do this, to do this. And I will say to these parents, look, do you know what your children is going there to do? So one man, I called the man because the man is a neighbor. He's a nice man. And he was pushing me to try to help his daughter to go to Italy. And I said to him, look, I'm a businessman. And what you're asking me to do is trafficking, human trafficking. I don't want to spoil my reputation for that. Then he tried different ways. He said, okay, why don't you just pretend that he's your wife now? Because then I was not married. <laughs> you know, I got married 27 years ago. Just pretend he's your wife. So you just carry and go like that. Then I said to him, if I carry and go like that, what will, he, what will she be doing there? You know, the man said to me, eh, he get this work, what did he do? That work, what did he do? That is prostitution. So this man, true story, is a very nice man. There's nothing wrong with him. He was prepared for his daughter to go to Italy already 30 years ago to be a prostitute. Why? Two reasons. One, this, the peop most people in a dose state, they can be angry at me or they are my people, so I can tell, talk to them the way I want. The most people in a dose state have no moral values. Moral values, eh? Mm -mm, you're not there. Over, I think it was 40 years ago, there's this musician called, uh, you know, he called himself Sir Patrick Idahosa. Maybe he's still alive, I don't know. So he had this song, we said, I think in Benin, say, uh, you know, it's like, what brought Benin women into prostitution? And it is Naira. So those of you who speak Benin very well can translate that. Maybe some of you can remember that song. When this man wrote that song, ah, he was swinging with it in the burial ceremony. Until the chiefs from the Oba were so angry with him. <laughs> because my father, where we were living, it was close opposite this Patrick Dowser's house. So one day, the chiefs from the Oba actually came and they bundled him into a car and they brought him to the Oba. <laughs> because they felt it was an insult. So Patrick Dowser had to apologize he has to kill I don't know how many cows he had to kill to 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 to, to appease the Oba because they felt it was an insult but that was already a, you know a gag of freedom of speech because this man already knew then I was I was a very small boy so this man already knew then <laughs> that the Benin women were so involved in prostitution there was no Italy then or 
Those girls in Nigeria. So he sang about it. And he was told to shut up. Don't say it. So if you if you if you can find that song, please send it to me. I was looking into looking for it, I couldn't find it. So it was already then. Now when you so when I got older, I went out of the country, I came back. And I try to explain to people, ah, look, oh, you need to get education, you need to go and study there, you need to do this, ah. They were just looking at me like, what is, what is wrong with this man? You want to go and make money, 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 money. So I never, I never did something with that. And then one day, even my parents, my, my own parents, my papa, mama, in the beginning, they, 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 they did not, they didn't like it. But... When I went back to Nigeria again, maybe about 20 years ago, I discovered that even they didn't have problem with it. <laughs> so the, the moral decadence was just going around everywhere. The moral decadence was now accepted all over the place. That is it's also in the report from the EU. Because people don't, didn't find a problem with it. Ah, what? One woman even said to her daughter, there was this uh, girl that worked for me in Nigeria. Well, she was my, you know, I won't say who she is, but she worked for me. And, and the mother said, ah, this thing, when this thing, these girls do it here anyway, and nobody paid them. So when they go to Italy, let them go and do it there now. Somebody's paying them for there at least. That is the mentality of people in those state. Whether they are being abused, all this one they are talking about trafficking, abuse, and whatever. That, that doesn't, they don't understand what trafficking is. They don't even understand why all the hula baloo about girls, uh, you know, you know, having sex with twenty men a day. People don't see what is wrong with that. What are they, why are these people making trouble with us now? We want to make money. We want to make money, and all these parents are constantly fighting their children, constantly beating them up. And you know that uh, Madame Bomboy in Dota went go Italy last year. He can't build three uh, 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 there for that stuff. Eh? You, what do you feel do? You can tell her all you want that Madame Bomboy's daughter is a prostitute in Italy for her it doesn't make any sense. She doesn't care. Just don't care. They told me, say, ah, you're not a big man for eh, Obodo Ibo. Say, all these small, small boys, when you, you know it, they went and born. Uh -uh. They don't get their own girls, oh. They have their own girls now. <laughs> and their own boys. In Nigeria, what they mean by that is that, as big as I am, all this uh, coat I'm wearing, all this baby grandma I'm speaking, all this computer thing I'm doing, uh -uh. They, don't, they are not seeing the effect, oh. Because all these small, small boys that I left behind that day, they have their own prostitutes now. They have their own uh, 419 scam artists. Ah, you see a boy. He's, uh, you know the day they born him now. This boy has like 30 women. They are working for him. <laughs> people, people will actually tell you that in the those state. Say, ah, those people have 30 women now. So, why are you such a stupid man? You go wear tie. Go the press keyboard. You say that computer you do. You know, this boy, you know how many women, each woman they pay 50,000 euro. Eh? 50,000 euro. Times and by, uh, because Nigerians can calculate very well without calculator. Times and by 10. Is that not half a billion? Then, 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 imagine that you have 100 girls. Eh? That's 5 million, that's 5 million euros. Just like that. That's a computer, 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 I'm the computer in my head. That is, that is how they talk to you in Benin City. So once in a while, the, this, 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 uh, these boys, I don't know what they call them, they will come, they will, they will use their money, and they will use everybody. And then the young people in you know, those days will say, Ah, I want to be like that boy. I want to be like that man. If you go to a those state today, I don't want to lie because I don't have the statistic. Before you will find a young man who say, I want to be like Mr. Aaron's. You have to come from a very good home. You have to go and look for very, you have to search and search and search. Before you see somebody who comes, ah, 
I like to be like this around man. I like the way what he does. No, 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 no. You see, young Nigerian, I don't state young people, even 12 years old, they want to be a scam artist. They want to be a Yahoo boy. They want to have girls under them. They want to have boys under the Yahoo boys under them. Today, that is not the goal of a young person in Edo State. Look, we are not talking about people of my age. Oh. That, that is already a lost generation. We are not even talking about people of my children's age who are in their 20s. Those are lost generation. We are talking about 12 years old. We are talking about 12 years old children who want to be scam artists, who want to be Yahoo boys, who want to have madame, be madame. We are talking about 12 years old girls who are already preparing to go to Italy to be prostitutes. So, what does that mean? It's, 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 it's a complete moral decadence. The moral structure, the family structure of Edolites have broken down completely. It's a decayed society. Completely decayed society. So the report went further. This the, <laughs> the report went further. I said, okay, how is this recruitment done of these girls? How, how do you recruit them? Because they went everything. They even went to Edo State. They discovered that most of these most of these girls that are being recruited, they are from poor families. Most of the time, all these small, small villages around Benin City, you know, you go deeper inside, bush, bush, go to uh, Ekboma, inside the bush, you know, all these small, small villages when you are going to, all this, all this, that road to Abuja that is not motorable, all those uh, families that are there who are fed up, their brain doesn't work anymore because of suffering, they recruit them there and they bring them to the city. And those, they will tell those parents, well, look, we are taking your daughters away. And we're going to give them, they are going to be, uh, yeah, they can make up any stories. And then those children, we owe them 40 to 50,000 euros that they have to pay back. Now, this is the worst part. Majority of the girls that were interviewed said, when they were asked them, where were you recruited? Listen, listen properly. When they were asked, where were you recruited? You know what they said? They said, church. And school. That's where we're recruited. Who were recruiting them in the church? Pastors. Okay? So the pastors were recruiting them in the church, and the pastors were recruiting them, and then you have these women in the church. I don't know where they call them. Uh, maybe you guys know. Those women, they, they, they recruit them as well in the church. This madame. They call them madame who come to the church, big madame, they, they drop 10% in the church. The pastor will then tell the madame, the girls to recruit. These are poor girls who went to the church to, to see the Lord. They went to the see the Lord. And this chair, you know, if, 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 this thing is so disgusting, eh? I get so angry. I get so angry, that's why some, I have to drop my, 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 my part sometimes. When I am, when I refer it, I will drop it. Because I don't want to smash it. That is angry I am. I don't want to smash it. Sometimes I feel so bored out that I feel like BAM! And I realize, ah, that thing, deal, no breaker. <laughs> that angry I am. Poor children. Who came from a dysfunctional home already. Their home is so dysfunctional that even European dogs that are outside, they live a better life. So now they find their way to the church because they want to be comforted by Jesus. Guess what? That is now where they fall victim to human trafficking. How about Nigeria? How about Nigeria? So which, uh, which kind of devil himself is sitting there? Eh? What kind of devil is sitting there? So when I, people hear me talking about pastors, they say, ah, this is a wrong guy. You used to talk about politicians. That is what we like now. Not all this pastor. Leave pastor alone. So look. When I came to Nigeria, first of all, my journey in Nigeria has stages. That's why I'm putting it in a book. People will get to read all these stages. 
The first, when I left and I was coming to Nigeria, the first thing I thought naively was people in Nigeria are poor, they don't have money, that's why they cannot get things done. So I come with a boatload of money and we're going to do it. When I came to Nigeria, to Edo State, I realized, then I found out in a very hard way that look, it is not the money. You can bring a trillion dollars into Edo State. That really is a sinkhole. That money will be buried in the state and you can't find it back and nothing will be done. So ask yourself, all the those people in the diaspora, all the money they have brought in the past 25 years, 30 years, what has been done with it in Edo State? If you go to a do state, a do state is a sinkhole, one of the most dirtier place in uh, Nigeria. Okay, one of the most dirtiest place in Nigeria. One of the most confused state in Nigeria. The houses are dilapidated, the roads are not tied, the, the there is flood everywhere. There is no commerce. No industry in that state. All that money people have brought into that state, there is not a single investment that was done with that money. No industry were built. All that money was brought to build some stupid house somewhere for bedroom flat. They call it for bedroom. They build one stupid house there. Is, is, these ladies have prostituted themselves for, for years to come and build one stupid house that will fall apart in a few years, that their brothers and families rip them half of the money off, but they'll do it anyway. Then the rest money will come, they will use it to do burial ceremony. I do, I do people love burial ceremony. I don't understand it. I still don't understand it. Burial in a those state has become like what I was saying, I know it's madness, but that's not the word I'm looking for. It is also a social event, but that's not the word I'm looking for. You can call it, um, it has become, um, I, I don't seem to find the word. I don't want to insult anybody, but maybe some of you can, you know, help me with the word to describe the, the state of barrier in a do state. People are happy to see somebody die. Why? Because we can bury the person. Hey, barrier is coming. Barrier, 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 barrier. Uh -uh. I said somebody just died, isn't it? Yeah, somebody died. The barrier will come. How about people disgustingly? People don't even know that this thing they are doing this thing anymore because that is just they have been in that situation all their lives. People. We spend um, millions. We are talking about 10, 20 millions to bury somebody. They call it burial. When you put, you, you, it's not the casket you buy and dig a hole and put the person inside of. That's not it in a dust state. It is all the thing around it. People will come with, they will dress like ostrich. You know? They will dress like ostrich. There's also that bird. I've forgotten the. The, the, the name of that bird, you know, because I'm very angry this morning, I'm forgetting a, a lot of uh, names, you know, they have these big birds with a big tail, big feather on the back. So they were all dressed, be beautiful, colorful feathers. They would dress like that. They said, Where are you guys going to? Oh, we are going for a barrier. Okay? Because we are going to bury this woman that, is that was 90 years old. When did she die? Oh, she died two years ago. What did you do with the dead, dead body? Oh, we just kept her at the mortuary. Taba. And then they would go. All these children would come back from Europe, from America. Everybody would carry $5,000. And then they would, they would do ceremony number one. They would do Thanksgiving. They will do this, they will do that, they will do that, they will kill 10 cows, they will kill 50 goats, they will do this. And, you know, I was, unfortunately, I experienced it once. 
which I was just there watching, going, <laughs> going with them, experiencing it. And they will be fighting. They will be fighting. They will have one meeting after the other. They will tell you, do you know that when this woman was uh, uh, 20 years old, that the woman had an illegitimate child with that village that there. So therefore, we have to go and appease that village now. And, and, so, and the people are waiting there. How much do those people want to be appeased? And they said half a million. Half a million, eh? So we have to go and appease that village. And I would say, uh, where your papa did this and that. I tell you the story of my father, how oh, my father died. But we don't do this type of crap. My father died. And then I said, okay, I'm coming to bury him. So we came. And then I said, all this bullshit, Nigerian bullshit, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't want to get involved. I'm going to bury my father. I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're easy like that, though. Because the village say that uh, my, when your sister got married, you did not bring food for them. So now they have found him. I said, okay. My sister got married 26 years ago. And she didn't get married in Esalon, so why are they now? What's their problem? And because my they should have brought food for them when she got married, okay? So since she didn't get married now, they, they, they have found my father who is dead 150,000 naira. So until my father bring that 150,000 naira, that my father cannot be buried. Then I said, okay, so how? Uh, how much, how is my father going to pay the debt when he is dead? And when he's, um, he, do, he didn't have a job before he died, he didn't have a pension, he didn't have anything, so the man is dead. He has no money. So I said, you know what's going to happen? I said, okay. I sent somebody to them, I said, look, tell them we're going to settle this in two, one or two ways. One, we are going to come and bury my father peacefully in his own property and then we all are going to go peacefully two since the only language they understand in nigeria is force that i will bring my own talks because you go and rent talks come how many boys did they bring bring come where would they go i will bring my own talks and i will carry police along the police will carry gun eh? I will even carry soldier follow body and I will come to the village and anybody that wants to stop me from burying my father, eh, he will hear and for help. Tell the old people that one. So they actually went and told the people. They say, hey, get this man when he come from America, eh? You might not hear what though. You might not hear what. This wouldn't talk. So the villagers said, we don't want trouble. Leave the man, let, let him come and bury his father. So we went and we buried my, with my father. And I, get, I went, I left that, that sinkhole. So, what is wrong with these people? So now, every single person from Edo State is that is what they are doing. And what pisses me off is when I see people who have spent 30 years in, in the Western world. Well, they have spent 20 years in the Western world and they still go back home and they are not, it's not just that they participate in these things. They are now the leader. They are now leading this type of nonsense in a do state. Because one go bury, one go bury, one go bury, one go bury. So now, you have a very poor family. The man is getting old. The mother, is, the, the wife is getting old. The children have no job. The girls have no job. So this man is thinking, hey, when I die, who is going to bury me? When I die tomorrow, eh? who is going to bury me? Who is going to show off when I'm dead? Say, uh, John, come. Bless you, go join this for one night, people. Uh, Agnes, bless you, you can go to Italy. Oh. So, you see, you see where I'm going, eh? The culture we are operating in those states is a totally screwed up culture that is messing up the brain of people. It just, it's like a microwave. People just put their head inside the microwave and put it on a full blast and it's melting their brain. And 
what pisses me off is that you have all these all these people of my age, older, younger, because they come from a do state, they go back and do the same nonsense. I mean, this these people are supposed to be given an example. So because of that now, if you if you, people who come you go to a do state, especially December is coming now, you see everybody coming back. And all our people in the diaspora, sorry if you if you if you if you know, I, they say ah, it runs up with generalize. Yes, I generalize, I know that. So they come in there and they behave exactly like the people they left behind hundred years ago. So if you come, if if you have stayed in Europe and America and Asia for, for 20, 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and then you come back and do exactly the same like the people you left behind 100 years ago, how are you better than they are? How do you know you're better? So that is why the society doesn't move forward. That's why all the people, all the people from Edo State that have traveled out of the country, the society has not moved forward for one centimeter, not even one millimeter, because all these people that come back, they've not been able to add any value to the society. And why have they not added value? Because, uh, you know, they have not been able to impact any understanding, any knowledge to anybody in a those state. The problem in a those state, why we have human trafficking is because the brain of most people is cooked. It is fried. In a microwave. So therefore, there's no progress being made. The, the, you know, there's no problem being made. So now, and we have a governor, and you have a speaker of the house, and you have all these people that don't seem to understand where the, what the root cause of the problem is. It is not Italy. Italy is not the problem. Italy is just, you know, they are only helping. In fact, if Italy were black people, they should be killing all these people when they arrive. So if it was Nigerians, they would wait at the, at the, at the, at the sea. Even the ones that survive, when they come in, they would carry hammer. Kill her. The other one come. Take her a knife, cut the neck off, throw her back into the sea. That is what Nigerians should have been doing if it was Nigerians that had to deal with this issue all the time. You only have to go to Italy to see how bad the situation is. And even then, they still go and buy expensive coffins. They went to prepare these children, bury them in a proper way. And then you have some 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 non entity in Nigeria saying writing a letter and say oh why did you bury our children without telling us come on wake up so now what is the solution what is the solution to this problem you see the solution lies with the same governor in the Oba of Benin because this this the the governor the politician the Oba of Benin and the uh, the churches they all the key to this problem they all the salvation to this problem i'm going to explain it now why they own the, their people these states we'll start with the other opinion i respect the other opinion but i'd like to say this the other opinion has a lot of power and I, I you know i know that there is this separation of state from traditional ruler or whatever but the other opinion have a great deal of power and I, 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 I beg the Oba Bini, I plead with him to please make a declaration that any any uh, onoje any onoje, onoje in a those state is a chief any onoje, only chief who allow a daughter from his uh, a village to be trafficked that Ogun will punish him because they fear Ogun, you know, I don't know, that's what they do. He has to make a declaration that from now on, any a madame that is going to be looking for girls to traffic to Italy, he shall go with punishing or punish her. Let them do their thing, how they want to do it. We need to stop this nonsense. Nobody has done anything. That's the problem. Nobody has done anything. So we just have powers that are not being used. We have powers that are not being used. So for me, we have the Oba, you have the traditional rulers, and they are well organized. If your Oba make a command today, all the traditional, say, I want to see all the traditional rulers at the palace, they will all come. 
So please, the other. I, I would like the other to call all these traditional rulers to order and please let them understand that look, they are you know the, those this 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 is a nuisance. It's a nuisance to our society in Europe. So, so I mean, in the Oba of Benin, if you say, okay, we have an Oba of Benin, and these people are Benins, that is, that is an insult. The, 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 they should see it as insult to the Oba of Benin that his people are now the most, uh, they, are, they constitute the biggest prostitutes in Italy, in any country. It should be an insult. So that's why I want the traditional rulers in the Dosti to really come together and start taking this very seriously because it has gotten out of hand. Now, the, the next one is the, gov the government. You know, one thing I have against Nigerian government, especially the gov governor of Basaki, is this. They don't understand the basic concept of leadership. To be a leader, you must not be in a perpetual campaign mode. After an election is finished, so okay, the next election are four years time, eh? Now ain't that one happen? Okay, so now let's go to work. That means the campaign has to stop. The name spoiling has to stop. It's now to bring time to bring people together to get to work. But our governors never get to work because. The governor, we refuse somebody like me an offer to train a thousand people. Why? Because I'm not from his political party. Because he thinks I'm a PDP. Because he thinks, ah, if this man is successful with that uh, 1,000 children, eh, this man might come to become, want to contest against me next, next time. That, that's just a fear. It's a political fear. So there are people around him who are poor advisors who don't even have the future of, they don't even have the, 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 the mindset to make the governor succeed because they are not after the success of the governor. They are also not after the success of a dog state. So they give the governor advice, which basically, frankly, these are stupid, idiotic, and moronic advice. Okay? Why is it like that? Because these people don't even understand what they are doing. They are not as educated as Aaron's. They, they have not seen the world. They have not run businesses. They don't even understand. They don't, cannot logically analyze the situation. So these are the people that advise our governors in Nigeria. So therefore, even when you have a governor who has good intention, he's going to screw up. Because people that are telling him stories, they are, they are idiots. They don't know what they are doing. Now, so therefore... A project of training a thousand people is not going to be done because the governor just feels that, oh, look, this, people, this man is not from my political party. So these children, what do you expect them to do? So I have told the Edo State government how to mobilize 20,000 youths in Edo State. This man that is talking to you can mobilize 20,000 youths from Edo State to do good things. But the only thing the governor has to do is to sign the paper, is to sign the paper that, oh, they are giving this man the, uh, the, the, the what do you call it, the authority or to, to help mobilize 20,000 people in the Doe state for good work, and we are going to support him all, any way we can. And for the rest, leave it to me and see what happens within a year. But... There is nobody has ever contacted me from the government in a Doe state to say, ah, this man you took the talk. What come and tell us how you want to do it? You, we, we, we don't want to do it or we don't believe you, but just come and tell us how you want to do it. Nobody, nobody. And and then people say they are looking for solutions. How can you be looking for solutions? There are people all over the world that see my videos. They say, wow, this man come from Nigeria, then Nigeria is still like this. But then you have a governor from my state who thinks, ah, let's kill the man. How dare he talk about our state like that? So that is just, it's just a conflict. It is a madness. So and if you have great ideas and you even want to work, you want to do it for yourself. If you go to a those state, there's always somebody who wants to kill you. So even now, we, I told you, I've not been. I, I've run away from a dose state. 
now I'm thinking, okay, look, which, maybe I go to Casina State to set up a, a 10,000 hectares farm there. Maybe we'll go to uh, Ibadan, uh, sorry, uh, or your state because you have big land there and water. If, if, if that is not going to work, we'll just run away, go to Liberia. We already told you know, because the Liberian election is not over yet, that's why the negotiations stop. But we're actually negotiating to go to Liberia. Eh? We're going to Liberia. Why? Because in Nigeria, they want to kill us. In those states, they want to kill us. And me, I love to farm. I love to bring people out of poverty. So how do I make my dream come true? I start to look for other African countries where I can go and start something. Whereas we have youths and youths and youths and youths that have no work. We have people who are hungry. We have people who are sick. And it is not difficult to get these people out of poverty. But we just cannot get one governor, one governor who is sincere enough to say, okay, look, let's give this a try. Sincerely, I don't, we are not going to use this as a conduit to carry money out of the country. We are not going to chop the money. We just, let's just, just put this money on it. Let's just do it right. This man, you can do it. Okay, let's see what you can do. If only I could get one, just one, then you can, you will, you will, be, you will be surprised what will happen. So that, that's the country where, that's why these children are going there. So the, the politicians are not sincere. The governor of a dope state is not sincere. It's just politics. Everything, these people wake up with politics in the morning and they go to bed with politics in the evening. It's all politics, 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 politics thinking. Nobody really sit down properly to say, okay, look, let's do this thing right. That's the problem with the politician. That's the problem with the dope state governor. And quite frankly, I, this, Governor Basaki has disappointed me the, the most. Look, all the other governors, look at what they call it, uh, uh, Oshomole or the other one, uh, Benedion, they did not disappoint me as much as Obasaki has disappointed me. Why? Because I didn't know the other guys. I didn't, I, when they were there, I, I, I didn't come up with a plan. I didn't, I didn't understand the, 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 the situation in Nigeria where to say, okay, look, this is where, how we can solve it. I was not on ground. But when Obasaki came to government, I was on ground. I have started the businesses in Benin City, and I, 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 you know, there was the, we could run with it. We have investors that could we could, could invest. We have a lot of things, and and this is the governor that said, okay, look, my priority is agriculture. I want to develop the state with agriculture, and yet today I can tell you this: nobody in those state know more more than I do in agriculture. You can call the CEO of any company. Uh, you know, they are CEOs and they understand how to run their company, but they are not agriculturists. I am a CEO and agriculturist. That's, that's a big difference. I'm not telling you I'm the smartest person in those state, but the combination of knowledge that I have and experience, if you put me to, down today with anybody in those state, I can vehemently tell you nobody can compete with me. Okay, so, and then you have people like me in those state, they're just walking around, Somebody is threatening to kill them until they have to run away. So it doesn't make sense. So and I think that it's time people and people have to sit down and start thinking. Really, what is their, What is your? What are you doing here on earth? What are you doing here on earth? You look at Obasaki. I read. I read. Uh, but I think he's fifty-eight or fifty-nine, maybe years old. Okay, look. When you are your fifty-eight years old or something like that. What legacy do you want to leave behind? What legacy do you want to leave behind? For me, when you're over 50, it's no longer about yourself. Okay? When you're over 50, what are things most be important to you in life? Like legacy. I want to leave a legacy behind. If I cannot leave a legacy behind in Nigeria, I'm going to go to another country to leave the legacy behind. If I cannot leave the legacy behind in Africa, I'm going to leave it behind in Europe and America. A man that is over 50 must leave a legacy behind. That's, you have to leave the earth better than you meant it. Okay? So now I ask myself, and all these governors, and you know, the, uh, Governor Basaki and the Speaker of the House of Assembly, when you're over 50, what legacy do you want to leave behind? What, what is something that is in place now that you say, okay, look, 
50 years from now, people will remember that I did it. 50 years from now, people will remember that this is what I did. Even if Bilejo, he's already forgotten. Bilejo is not even 20 years gone. He's, he's already forgotten. So, and I don't understand how people think. It's not about the money. Life is not about the money. So, let's move to the pastors. These pastors are crucial. These pastors are worse than the politicians. People don't understand when I say that, that pastors are worse than politicians. The reason why pastors are worse than a politician is this. If somebody is pursuing you and want to kill you, and you start to run, because there is a house there, you see light. Light did that house. People did that house. So you run, 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 run. Just with the goal just to get there. Because you are sure when you get there and you knock the door, they will open the door from, for you and then and then they will rescue you from this person who's trying to kill you. So you run, 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 run. With all your strength, by the time you finally get there, you hit the door and they open the door. You discover that, hey, these people are worse than the one that is trying to kill me. They are friends. And then you look back you see that person now slowing down and walking towards you because they know that they have caught you and you look at the house you are running to, those people are smiling and then you know you are finished. That is what the churches do in Nigeria. That is what, so they are war. So the one that is trying to kill you is bad though, but the last hope in you was that when I get to that house, I'm going to survive. People are going to rescue me. That is the church. The last house is the church. It's the pastor. By the time you get to the last house now, they, they just give you a hammer on your head. That kills the hope of people. The pastor, the church is the last resort. And this last resort kills the hope, kills everything, the, the, what the person has left. That's why the churches are worse. The pastors are worse in Nigeria today than the politicians. Now, so, if you go to some part of the north, they are recruiting terrorists in the, in the mosque. If you go to this part of the south, they are recruiting, uh, you know, uh, prostitutes from the church. They are recruiting prostitutes from the church. So, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, they are trafficking people from the church. You tell me. Christians in Nigeria think they are better than Muslims. <laughs> ah, so let me laugh. Oh. So guys, this is it. Now, to change all this, the government must start immediately to start to uh, promote awareness. And not with the stupid awareness they start and just collect money. They will budget at 100 million. And then at the end, and somebody will pocket 80 million. No, not be that tired. Time of that time is over now. So what people should do is to have a proper awareness program. People, these girls need to go back to school. We need to go back to school. We need to start teaching parents. Children, the parents of these ch children. We need to start teaching parenthood. Even ch ch parents who have 12 years old children. We need to get all these parents back to school. Everybody go back to school because the church is not doing it. The church is killing them. We need to get back to school. And those state government needs to come up with a school curriculum for parenting, for, 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 for moral. It will up uplift the morality of the people, moral uplifting, and teach people the proper way of behavior. That's what we call values. The value of a human being. People have lost value of a human being. We're not even talking about values of good people. Value of a human being. People have lost it in Nigeria in a dose state. People are like animals. That has to change. You, you can only change that by awareness. A dose state is not that big old. You can only change that by awareness and by, and, by, and by helping people to understand the effects, the cause and effect. So they say, eh, money not day. You don't need money. You don't need money. It's only the will that is needed. The will to do the right thing. I tell you, for example, 
All the, we have big co colleges, government colleges in uh, in Edo State, uh, Western Boys High School, Edo College, ICC. We have a big university in Edo State, in Benin State. You know, sorry, in uh, Benin City. Look, when the governor should give me the uh, the go ahead, what I would do is this: I will organize every weekend a training program for the next twelve weeks. A training program to start teaching people. Parenthood for the next 12 weeks, and I will have all these secondary schools filled up in, on Saturday. They will be coming to the secondary schools. We will, we will, we will take I, all, the, all the parents have to come. We will take a register, we put, write them name down, write them down, write them down, write them down, and we divide them among all the colleges. So. The first thing I would do is that I would find out okay, how many teachers do I need? I need about I need about you know 500 teachers to be doing that. So I will go to these present schools, get the best teachers out of them, train the teachers, train the teachers of what I want to see happen. They will be in a continual training program from what, what I want to see in them happen. I will give them books. We have all these books now. Where are my books? Eh? Dr. Sonia Adelaide has pro written books about this, plenty. The man has written over 300 books. So the man is a Nigerian. These books, I will go and buy them. And then I will start teaching these people. I will teach 500 teachers. I will put them in the, in the hall. If you go to University of Benin, they have a big hall there that can take 500 people, maybe a thousand people. I will put them in that hall. I will train them for two weeks. I will drill them for two weeks. Eight o'clock, you will come, you will go home five. Every day, we'll do that for as long as it takes. By the time you finish that training, you will be a good person. You will know how parents will work. So now, I have trained 500 teachers, me, myself, and I. Then, I will then send them out. You go and train. You go and train. Each teacher will have 50 parents. You go and train them. You go to Western Boys High School. You will go, Every Saturday you will be there and you will train them. You will be training people the way I train you from Monday, 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 or 5 o'clock in the evening. Every Saturday. You will train them for 12 weeks. You will get home work. You know? That is for the parents, oh. and these teachers, because they're already on, on duty, they already have a job, so what you do is that you give them small money, add, add to that one. So maybe it's uh, 10,000 naira you want to add to them per month, maybe 15, you add it to them. So it is cheap. 10,000 times 5, 5, 500,000 uh, uh, people, 500, 500 people, that's a peanut. So that will just be going. Then I will gather another bunch of teachers, and I will teach them, how to how to train up young people young people coming up young girls young boys you know yahoo boys and all these things inject new values into them nigerians don't know today what love is what how is it to have empathy because i've experimented it show nigeria a dead body a nigerian show a dead body you say what do you think nigeria will tell you i don't care what you concern me inside now a dead body. Show a Nigerian a woman being raped. Yeah, the, this woman is she's being raped. What do you think? You say, ah, let me say now. You know, no say when wear that kind of small skirt, men go rape them. Show a Nigerian a, a, a somebody being tortured to death. Then you say, ah, I like that one. Make a make a send to my friends on WhatsApp. That is how decayed the society is. Oh. It's a time bomb. There are two outcomes to this situation in Nigeria. One is, you know, sorry for my finger. One is going to be a war. Number two is going to be a genocide. And I will not be there. Anybody that think I'll be in Nigeria when Nigeria is having a war, that lie, I won't be there. The few people that I know there that I love, I will take them out of the country and will just let it burn. Because the people are cooking it up. They are cooking up 
one genocide or number two war because all these people who have no job who have no morality who see a dead body and say it consigned me these people are lunatics they are, believe me they are lunatics so by the time these people run they crack something crack their head they run into the society then you come and see what happened the politicians think the pastor think ah we let's keep them that way we keep them poor because then we can control them. Big mistake. If you can control them, then I can control them too. And another lunatic can control them to do bad things. So being able to, because what they do is they just take the remote control from you and they remote control these people because they are mob. Our society, we are growing mobs. People with mob mentality. Say, come, let's go and kill one person there. Even Pastor Adeboye was very proud to tell a story how the police stopped him because he was on the wrong road. And then later, when some mob saw that the police stopped him, they all came with cutlass and everything, and the police had to run away. Those are the type of people we are growing up today. And before somebody say, yeah, Pastor Adeboye didn't say that, I have the video, okay? So, gentlemen, the problem of the human trafficking is a very simple problem to solve. It is not the problem is not going to be solved in Italy. The problem has to be solved in a do state, gone, gone, gone by the people. Their head is screwed up, and we have to start working on the head. How do you do that? Education, training, awareness campaign. That's it. And that's what we start. How much do all this cost? You have Mr. Aarons who is ready to do it for free, so it doesn't cost that much. We have uh, college teachers who are already in unemployment. Give them small money, plan transport money, tell them they have to do this, that this is good for the society, they will do it. Go to colleges that is already your own. They do state government own these colleges, so on Saturday nobody is using them. On Sunday, nobody go there. Use the class, empty classroom to conduct these trainings. Go to the the the, 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 the what they call these people in the Uniband, uh, the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor of Uniband. The man will be so happy. So let you use his main auditorium that can take maybe a thousand people for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Sir. The man will be so happy to get out all the chaos from a dose state if that is going to be his contribution. And then you can start getting this thing done. Go to make an announcement on radio. Who we'll get the radio station now? You get that. Make an announcement on TV stations. Who get the TV stations? Now you get that. Then um, let's get this rolling. You see, all this thing I just told you is too simple. And Nigerians don't like doing something that is too simple. Why? Because you cannot steal money from it. You cannot steal money from it. So the, the fight we constantly have with government is because we are fighting to get something done and the government is fighting to loot money. So when you come up with an idea that can get something done, the government is fighting you because if something is done, there is no way to steal money. Okay, if you call these stupid Aram's guys to come and give lectures for three weeks for free, uh -uh, in a free auditorium, in a free auditorium at the university, uh, uh, where are we going to get the money at? How are we going to loot the system? We cannot loot the system. So that story, we are not, we are not going to do it. You know what we are going to do? We are going to blame the entire government. It is their fault. It is, that is, they are the ones that is doing it while we don't, our children are crossing the sea. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the problem. I didn't only tell you the problem. I've told you the solution. And I've told you how, step by step, how these solutions can be implemented. The only reason why we are still like this, why I do stay with remain a mess and a sinkhole, is because we don't have anybody in a dosage right now with the power. With the power who is prepared to do something for their people. We don't have anybody in a dosage right now. And we didn't have in the last 20 years at least 
who is prepared, who was prepared to do something for their people. Because these adults, if you show them a tortured picture, they say, Nami Senam. If you show them a picture of a woman being raped, now na, na God punish them. If you show him the picture of uh, somebody that is uh, had a badly wounded from road accident, he say, which one concerns me inside? That is how these adults are, these people in politics. That is how these pastors are, these people that are so-called men of God. And these people are the ones breathing these, these hooligans, you know, these scary looking creatures that we call youths. These people are the ones breathing them. That's why people like me have decided to leave the place for them because it's a sinkhole and you don't, if you want to, if you go to a sinkhole, it will swallow you. You don't do anything to rescue yourself. A sinkhole will swallow you. So, officially, I have declared those state a sinkhole. Thank you very much. And I will be sending this material to the Italian government. I will write a personal dissertation to the Italian government and submit it to the EU and let them understand that they should not, in, under any circumstances, send one euro to Nigeria to solve the trafficking problem. They should understand that they should not, under any circumstances, send one euro to a do state to solve the trafficking problem. Because all these gentlemen that came to Italy pretending they care absolutely doesn't care at all. They don't give a hoot about what goes on in Nigeria. They don't give a hoot about what goes on with your people because if they gave the hood about it they would have helped people like Arams to establish a, 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 you know a, a 1000 jobs for their people they would have helped, they would have listened to Mr Arams when he said ah look oh, uh, we can get this educational program going on for as less than maybe 20 million naira what is 20 million in those state adebayo is getting people to donate 1 billion to build the auditorium in the church. So why can't a do state governor get 20 million? Why can't those state government pick up a phone, call Dan Cote, Dan Cote is a friend, say, Mr. Dan Cote, listen, I'm, I'm in a big mess here, I need, uh, I need you to help us with 100 million. Then Cote will say, what do you want to do with 100 million? Say, ah, this 100 million I want to use to revamp our young people, we want to educate them, we want to mobilize them, we want to do this. Within five minutes, that money will be on the account in a do state oh. So, you know, these people are talking like we are idiots. We are not, I, know, I know they have a lot of idiots in Nigeria, but I'm not one of them. You know, it is not difficult to do the right thing. It is not difficult to do the right thing, especially in this time of the world. It's not difficult to do the right thing. The only thing why right things are not being done is because people don't want to do it. Because one phone call, and those days we have a billion naira. Few phone calls. And those days we have a, a billion naira to revamp the, 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 the mental decadence of the people in those state. To revamp the, 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 the system. Because the key is the people. The brain of the people is screwed up. As long as the brain is screwed up, nothing positive will ever happen in that country. And that is where the governor, the government, the traditional rulers, the pastors, and all those you know other people must start to invest in their people so don't come to italy and and try to usurp our intelligence and tell us that you care for the people because quite frankly you don't give a damn thank you very much for listening i appreciate that and have a nice day